The big question is, mm. who's going to replace him? <laughs> Well, Carlo Ancelotti was talking through the options today in the pre-match press conference and, and he gave rather a lot of options. He gave options that maybe would surprise you. He, he pointed out that he played with Isco at the top of the pitch. He pointed out that he played Marco, Marco Asensio as a false nine. Jovic would be a natural candidate. He mentioned Gareth Bale and I think everyone in Britain thought, oh, Gareth Bale, that would be interesting. Um, my, my guess is that he will add an extra midfielder and that he will play Jovic up front. What would you do? Does Jovic, does, does he have a pulse? Is he still around? Huh? Are you kidding me? Jovic cannot be the answer. No. Look, if, if I'm a Real Madrid fan, and I'm thinking about all the options possibly for Real Madrid, man, Jovic would be last on that list. I, I, mm -hmm. I will reshuffle all sorts of different things instead of having Jovic out there, simply because of what I've seen and haven't seen from him. And when I say, does he have a pulse, it's because at times... This guy's body language, you would think that he is playing in some sort of Sunday league with his friends. And this is Real Madrid, opportunity of a lifetime. And whenever he does get his chances, he's just kind of like, all right, this is cool. This is a nice experience. So we've got rid of Jovic. Right, okay. He's off the list. Uh-huh. <laughs> the list is not great. You're not giving me much. Dude. No. No. I'm not working with a lot. But I, if I'm Carlo Ancelotti, I'm saying, who are the players that I trust? And obviously... He trusts Rodrigo coming off the bench. He has done that regularly. Maybe Rodrigo comes on the field and Asensio, who's also been a player who has been important for Real Madrid, will play in that sort of false nine position. That's what I would do. That's if it? I, yes. I'm not trusting anybody else because, honestly, they haven't given me any reason to believe that they can do the job. There's a reason as to why these guys are not playing consistently. There, there's been plenty of opportunities for Carlo Ancelotti to rotate, and believe me, while we think that Carlo Ancelotti is just enamored with his starting 11, yeah, maybe so. But he's also not in love with what he has available coming off the bench. And so, therefore, he has to settle with the starting 11 and say, okay, guys, hey, hang on for as long as you possibly can. So, if I'm Ancelotti, I'm trusting from what I've seen from this team. And I'm going to say Rodrigo on the right hand side, Asensio false nine. I'm thinking back to that first leg against PSG, Sid, where all the talk was about Karim Benzema and his fitness. Obviously, he was risked for that tie. What is telling maybe going into the game tomorrow is the fact that Carlo Ancelotti is going to rest him, with obviously the priority being the Champions League, given the lead they have at the top of the table. And that is exactly why I don't think any Real Madrid fan is looking at this and thinking, oh, what a disaster. What a disaster that Karim Benzema can't play in the Clasico. In fact, I actually genuinely believe there are a lot of Real Madrid fans who are very pleased about this. Are very pleased that Ancelotti has looked at this and thought, I don't take the risk. I do not risk Karim Benzema, given the 10-point lead at the top of the table, given the fact that they're 15 points ahead of Barcelona. There is no point because it's the Champions League that really matters. And as you say, we saw in Paris that Benzema wasn't fully fit. Ancelotti had said before the second leg, there's no way Tony Cross plays unless he's 100%. And I think there is a, an element of lesson learned, and more than anything else now, an element of prioritisation, given what you already have in the bag in La Liga. So is there also an element, aside from a thrashing, that Real Madrid haven't got too much to lose here? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's a difficult conclusion to come to because it's the Clasico and it always matters. But fundamentally, I agree with you. I, I think Real Madrid don't have a huge amount to lose. Now, they will be disappointed, of course, if Barcelona beat them. They will feel that there's, there's if you like, the break of that run because bear in mind, it's five Clasicos in a row now that Real Madrid have won against Barcelona, a real sense of, of superiority. And they won't want to give Barcelona the feeling that they can now compete again, that Barcelona are on their way back. But fundamentally, when they take a step back from it, I think you're right, there isn't a huge amount to lose. I mean, Ancelotti was asked, I think it was last, last week after the Mallorca game, how could you possibly lose a league from this position with 10 games to go and you've got a 10-point lead? And he said, well, how could you possibly lose a European Cup final when you're 3-0 up? So he knows that it's not impossible <laughs> to lose this league, but it's very, very unlikely. And, and that's the thing, isn't it? From a Real Madrid perspective, they're going into this very differently than Barcelona, mm -hmm. who want to show... Look, we're back. Mm -hmm. What we've achieved over the last couple of months has kind of silenced a lot of our critics. And to take that one step closer, we go into the league leaders, our big rivals, mm -hmm. and take three points back to Catalonia. And it's all set up perfectly for Barcelona, given their own success. Yeah, you beat Osasuna last week. OK, now we're setting up the week. Galatasaray away, you go and beat them. All right, we're advancing Europa League. And now at the end of the week, to close it out, El Clásico. So you build the momentum necessary to get to El Clásico, feeling good about yourself. 
And this is where I think, even though there's not much to lose here for Real Madrid, there's an opportunity for Real Madrid to say... Reality check. Huh? Yeah, that's right. You can beat Osasuna all you want. Yeah. You can beat Galatasaray all you want. Come and play with the big people here, with the big boys. Come and sit at the big boy table. Huh? Do you have it in you to come into Bernabeu and get a result? And it's an opportunity for Real Madrid to step on Barcelona and say, you're not quite what you think you are just yet. A chance, an opportunity. Now that opportunity dwindles with the fact that Karim Benzema is not available because he changes the way that Real Madrid can play in the final third. And yet I think it's a classico, it's always important, it always matters. Uh, let's go back, uh, shall we, to Rave Arcano. Oh, look at this. Oh, what was that? A man who's short. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised he's yes. just not mobbed, mobbed by fans. Oh, yes. At the club, of course, where he played for two seasons. I don't think Casey can hear us or he's ignoring us. I think he's ignoring us at this point. <laughs> so, so, so you're going to have to do this interview. Okay. What would you like me to ask? <laughs> <laughs> Professional sit. Professional uh, thank, thank sit. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Um, I mean, I, 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 I'm trying to work out if Casey is just ignoring you or, or can't hear you. I can't hear you. You can't yeah, hear the hey, Sometimes hey, I can hear Pete. It, 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 hey, guys. It's, it's, it's very, very, very much better that way around.